I wanted to try some of the Molex ClickMate connectors, but I knew none of my crimping tools would be small enough for the tiny terminals that go into the ClickMate housings. And the price of the Molex hand tool for the terminals is way out of the hobbyist range. So I thought I would give this iCrimp IWS 3220M crimping tool from Amazon a try. The description for the tool even lists the ClickMate terminals, so that's encouraging. Of course, the ad picture makes it look like a very high precision tool, but it is only $26, so I will keep the $26 in mind as I try out the tool. There are two die dimension charts on the page for the crimping tool. One says the thickness of the 1 and 1.3 millimeter wide sections is 2.6 millimeters. The other says the thickness of the 1 millimeter wide section is 2.6 millimeters, and the other three widths are 4 millimeters thick. It turns out only the 1 mm wide section of the die is 2.6 mm thick. The finish on the dies is not great. Wouldn't expect it to be at this price. The dies do fit together very good. There does look to be some asymmetry in the dies. Looks minor, but I did notice it. Right here on the 1 mm section, can see the right bottom part of the insulation die is a bit taller. Maybe it's supposed to be? I'll see in a bit how it crimps. The tool moves very smoothly. I really like that the lower die moves in a straight line. I think that should help keep the terminal from twisting. At least I hope it does. I would like a little finer ratchet. It's pretty coarse. And holding the tiny terminals in place while the wire is being inserted is a very important feature. Okay, I'm going to start with the terminals that I bought this thing for. These ClickMate terminals are about 0.2 inches long and therein is going to lie the majority of the difficulty going to have to crimp them under the microscope to see what I'm doing. These terminals are made for 26 to 28 gauge wire and have a width of about 1 millimeter and a crimp area that is 2 millimeters long so both crimp tabs should be just inside the outside edge of the dies. I'm going to be using 26 gauge wire and the height of the crimp opening is listed at 0.5 millimeters for this tool. That will be too small so I won't be able to just squeeze till it won't move anymore. Insulation strip length is 1.5 to 1.7 millimeters. That's going to be tight. Getting the terminals into the die straight is the first challenge. Holding the wire in the right position is going to be crucial. Have a half a millimeter of leadway, if that much. Getting the feel for how much pressure is going to take a bit of practice. That's not too bad. I didn't overdo the pressure a whole lot, so it didn't deform the tabs much. The insulation tab roll is better than the wire tabs. That's probably just the dies. I think this would work better with 28 gauge wire. Let me see if I can get another angle for that. Much easier to crimp under the microscope than looking at a monitor from the camera. I keep wanting to turn the terminal the wrong way. If I strip the wire just right, can align the wire with the outside edge of the die, and that seems to do pretty good. Yeah, it's not rolling the wire tabs as much as I would like, but doesn't look too bad. I think I can live with that. One more test. I stripped back the insulation enough so that the only thing holding the wire is the wire crimp. So I'll put a vise on the scale and zero it. The vise weighs like 8 pounds. Wire will pull out way before it lifts off. Clamp the end of the terminal in the vise. And then lift slowly. Looks like over four pounds, quite a bit more than I was expecting. So I think that's a pretty good wire crimp, even if it's not great looking. Doesn't have that rolled look, but that may be due to the 26 gauge wire in these dies. It will get me by. I do want to try the Molex SL crimp terminals. I use these more than anything else. 
This is the 70058 series, 24 to 30 gauge wire. And they're big enough to see, which helps a lot. Wire gets stripped a little over an eighth of an inch. Terminal fits nice in the 1.6 millimeter slot. I'll squeeze it pretty tight. I think the die height is about right for this gauge wire. That looks quite nice, better than what I've been using. I really do like the fact that the die moves straight in. There wasn't any rolling of the terminal at all. The tabs on the terminal are rolled just like I like them. Tool is better at these than the ClickMate terminals, it seems. It's a low cost crimping tool. Moves very smoothly and feels quite nice in the hand. If I could change one thing on the tool, I think it would be finer ratchet teeth. Would help with the smaller terminals. I'm not extremely happy with the ClickMate terminal results. More practice on my part I'm sure will help. Maybe have to order another 100 or so terminals. I think I've done about 30. and I've been okay with maybe 10 out of the 30. But even a crimp that I didn't like the looks of held up to over 4 pounds of pullout so I may be being a bit too picky. I am being too picky for a $26 tool. It's well worth the money. The SL terminal crimp was great. This will definitely be what I use for them from now on. Worth the money just for that. I didn't have any 28 gauge wire. I may order some and see how it does in the ClickMate terminals. The one millimeter slot on the tool is really just a bit too small for the 26 gauge wire. I mean the tool even lists that slot for 28 to 32 gauge so I'm really using it out of its intended spec for the 26 gauge wire. I'll probably still be on the lookout for a crimp tool for the ClickMate terminals, one that hopefully can do a better job with the larger wire, but I'll make do with this for the time being. So I'm glad I bought it. That's always a good endorsement, I guess. If you're planning on using 26 gauge wire for the tiny one millimeter terminals, probably should look for something else. This is just going to get you by. I'll be practicing. If it turns out it's a gem and it was just me, I'll do an update. Thank you for watching.